Hello again, everybody. I'm Paul Steigerwald. Sometimes when you ask a player why he wears a certain number, he'll just say, that's the number the equipment manager gave me in my first training camp. Other times, there'll be a story behind the numerals below the name, like a birthday or a favorite number. Well, here's a story about a number that ties three alumni across 40 years of Penguins hockey. Simone pulls the trigger and scores, Dominic Simone. And Brian Elliott just lost his liquor license. Dominic Simone currently has the number 12 on his jersey, and Bob Airy proudly wore number 12 during the 91 and 92 Stanley Cup championships. But the original number 12 goes back to the start of the Penguins franchise. To Schenkel, the drive, scores! Well, a nice pass out of the corner to an uncovered Schenkel standing about 20 feet on the right wing side. His shot was not a hard one, but well placed. Winger Ken Schenkel came to the Penguins from the New York Rangers in the NHL expansion draft in 1967 and donned the number 12 sweater for six seasons. Once that expansion came on, I felt that I was going to have a chance of uh, really sticking with the club and uh, to me as I've always called Pittsburgh my home. Schenkel remained with the club as a scout and was only months away from becoming the team's third coach in history when he discovered a player to whom he would ultimately bequeath the jersey. Kenny Schenkel. He noticed me when I was playing in Oshawa like he was a scout at the time and then the next year he became our coach and when he walked in he says to John Doolin equipment trainer he says give the, my number, because Kenny Schinkel wore number 12 in the NHL, give my number to this guy right here. Greg Malone did the number proud, wearing it for seven seasons, scoring 143 goals and 364 points as a Penguin. Malone returned to the Penguins as chief scout in 1989 and kept in contact with Schinkel, who had gone on to Hartford to be the chief scout under GM Eddie Johnston. He's like a second dad to me. Not only is my first coach in doing that, but also uh, going back to my scouting days. And Malone is the dad to the very first Pittsburgh-trained hockey player to ever wear the Penguins uniform, Ryan Malone. Having my dad uh, be part of the Penguins early on, obviously um, I was I think, attracted to the game and kind of grew up with a little mini stick in my hand and a little helmet on, trying my dad's big gloves on. And I think as I grew up in Pittsburgh, um, we played a lot of street hockey, roller hockey. Ryan was a late bloomer. And in 1999, he was playing U.S. junior hockey for the USHL Omaha Lancers when he started to draw attention of NHL scouts, including the Penguins head scout, who found himself in a somewhat awkward position at the 1999 NHL draft. I wanted somebody else to draft him. When I was having my meetings and his name came up, I walked out of the room. I wanted guys to talk freely about him. Is he a good skater? Anything negative, anything like that. And Herbie Brooks was a big pusher of him. All of a sudden, comes down to make the pick. Guys are all excited. I'm sitting back. Craig's sitting there. I make the announcement. I says, I'm not making the announcement. Herbie Brooks says, I'll make the announcement. After the draft, a lot of people says, oh, you just get drafted because your dad's there, this, that, whatever. He gave him more incentive, more uh, drive to make a proof be other people wrong. Basically came down to my other scouts. I had nothing to do with it. Ryan wore the number 47 in his rookie training camp, but eventually he would inherit the number to go with the name. And he also inherited the dad's nickname, Bugsy. I think it came from Mike Lang. Basically at that time, there was a movie out, Bugsy Malone, the little gangster. He just started to say, hey, you're Bugsy. Bugsy, let's go. <laughs> and it just stuck. Around the locker room, I was uh, Bugsy Jr. Finally made the team. Uh, my first year at a rookie camp, it just became uh, Bugsy, and then my dad was Bugsy's dad after that. <laughs> Ryan Malone had been a teenager interacting with the likes of Yaramir Yager years before he actually had a chance to play against him in the NHL. Yager believed in Bugsy's ability at ping pong. When my dad was, I remember Yager when he was younger and Marty Strack, I think I was like 13, 14. There's a ping pong table there, and. Yager was like, I'll put a thousand dollars on Malone. I'm like 13 years old. And I'm like, uh, okay, I don't know. <laughs> I obviously was very nervous. And right from the face off, the Penguins have put it in. Ryan Malone will get his first NHL goal. Oh no, Eddie Spaghetti. Ryan would later have an opportunity to be a part of history, playing alongside another Penguins all time great, and helping Sidney Crosby reach an early milestone. <laughs> Well, he can't believe it. 
uh, obviously he thinks it's great. The only thing I told him, I said, well, if you want any ice time and we get Malkin over here, you better stay on the wing. An extended power play. Here's Crosby to Malone. Slap shot. Score! Sidney Crosby has become the youngest player in the 89-year history of the National Hockey League to register 100 points. It's one of my few slap shots I think I've ever taken, <laughs> for sure. And I think uh, maybe John LeClaire came in and... Uh, lost the draw and then Sid maybe passed it over to me I just ended up slapping it on net and um, yeah, it was pretty pretty cool to be part of uh, Sid's history but um, you know it's, he's, he's a pretty amazing player so I didn't, I didn't have to do too much to, uh, to be part of that. Ryan flashed his considerable skill and proved his mettle as the Penguins went all the way to the Stanley Cup final in 2008. Obviously the 08 run was great not the way we wanted but uh, to go there from my, our first year in 03, uh, not being so hot, so good, kind of rebuilding, and then uh, making it to the you know, the final dance uh, was a lot of fun. And the, the team, we still uh, talk to each other, and we have a lot of close friends still from that uh, that uh, time period. So looking back now, I was very uh, very blessed and humbled to be part of the be part of those teams.